NerdErotic.com. Amazon is the gift that keeps on giving, and for that, I am grateful. I'm also grateful for you in the audience. Thank you for watching. We just passed 500,000 subscribers. That's a half a million to you and me, and I never thought we would get here, but not everybody who watches is a friendly. Apparently, Amazon is watching too, and I guess I have to thank them because they responded directly to not only some of my videos, many others, and yes, the showrunners, the creatives, the adult pretenders have gone full Lucasfilm. Oh, but it doesn't end there. Lindsay Weber, the producer of The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Prime, formerly of Bad Reboot, who said that Lord of the Rings needed to reflect the world that we live in today, fired some shots at us in the fandom and i'm here to retort to the crooked words bandied about by witless worms we also got a follow-up to dwarves of color and we'll get to all of those gifts but let's get to the latest a trailer which dropped today incidentally at time of recording on the american prime video youtube page while it's number six on trending it's sitting at 151,000 dislikes to 22,000 likes. And currently, at time of recording in Professor Tolkien's home country, the ratio is 15,000 dislikes to 2,500 likes. Guess you can add that to the ratio pile. My brother gave his life hunting the enemy. The trailer opens with a frightened looking man being killed horribly. Galadriel's brother, which one? Not really sure, could be Finrod, who was technically killed at the hands of Sauron, protecting Baron of Baron and Luthien from a werewolf. Or it could be Angrad or Egnor, who died during the Dagor Bragalock or the Battle of Sudden Flame, technically at the hands of Morgoth, not Sauron. Neither of them would have much of a body left, especially for Sauron to mark, and that is indeed Sauron's mark. The same one we saw in the CSI Gylad clip. Also, I might want to mention that even if this series starts on the first day of the Second Age, whichever brother they pick, they have all been dead for over 60 years. I guess I should also consider that the showrunners would just make up another brother for Galadriel. His task is now mine. Once again, I will mention Galadriel did not take part in any of the major wars of the First Age or the Second. But no, it never was her task because this was completely made up Never happened in the lore, but I need to remember that we live in a modern society and modern intersectional feminism means taking away all things feminine, giving any woman a man's mission and a man's armor, making a woman a dude. Some have theorized that Guy Ladriel is wearing her brother's armor, and even if they were the same height, there is a difference between the male body and the female body. But that being said, this reminds me of something. I need you to fix his suit. The suit is literal perfection. It will be. When it fits a woman. What do the kids say these days? Same energy. This probably explains Sean Gunner, the head of the Tolkien Society's unironic tweet. It looks like the Rings of Power will be an adaptation to definitively pass the Bechtel test. Unfortunately, Sean, I completely agree with you. This brings us to the god-awful song they chose to put behind this trailer, and I shit you not, somebody had to point this out in the real BBC live stream today. The very first lyrics are, speak your truth. Truth. And here comes Guy Ladriel the Barbarian. Stand with me. Ours was no chance meeting. Now, we don't see who Galadriel is speaking with here, but my best guess is it's either our Numenorean of color, Queen Regent Muriel, who never really was a queen, or it's Halbrand, aka Dude, Where's My Morgoth? Not fate, nor destiny. Ours was the work of something greater. This could quite possibly be one of the opening scenes of the series where Galadriel gets bullied. God, I hope we get a getting knocked down and standing back up again scene like Captain Marvel. Oh, looky here, we got Chicka Chicka Slim Lady or Feminem. Either one works. Now, I've been told that Feminem slash Slim Lady is part of an all female order of elven zealots. Whoever came up with the idea to put this music to something by Tolkien should be fired along with the showrunners, Lindsay Weber, and probably absolutely everyone who worked on this show. Oh look, it's not Gandalf with not a hobbit, but a Harfoot, female Frodo, and some wargs. 
remember wizards, remember hobbits, remember wargs, while well, two of the three weren't in the second age. And now it's time for some ambiguously dramatic trailer speak. Each of us, every one, must decide who we shall be. What does that even mean? She sounds like the Kamala Harris of Numenor. Oh, look, it's Don Lemonless, and that fade is looking fresh. I am not the hero you seek. Oh, he most definitely isn't, but instead of having Dude, Where's My Morgoth be Anatar, the Lord of Gifts, like he is in the lore, they decided to make him look like the male traditional hero. Now, the showrunners will probably spin it as some kind of 4D chess subversion of expectations, but I'll say it's just another trope of intersectional feminism. Whatever it was you did, be free of it. Oh my god, they're totally gonna ship Galadriel and Halbrand hashtag Sarandriel. One day this will be your kingdom. Oh my god, it's the first female dwarf ever in a fantasy. Uh, oh, no, it isn't. Well, technically it's just the first female dwarf in an overpriced, bloated, corporate abomination. Actually, it's not even that. Never mind. Once again, that is one of Deesa's very few lines in this show. To be fair, she memorized her lines pretty well on the press tour. The fastest female dwarf. You know, she is the fastest female dwarf that we've ever seen on screen. Female dwarf that we will ever see on the screen. Woo, woo, woo! Raise your sail and then let go. Choose not the path of fear, but that of faith. A very poignant line for Amazon, it's too bad they feared the woke mob and didn't have enough faith in Tolkien. It boggles the mind that so many of these corporate hacks want to emulate the network that was just sold and we were all told, and I didn't mean that to rhyme, that it never turned a profit, the CW. And that's exactly what this is. When it fits a woman. <laughs> And now it's time for more ambiguously saccharine trailer speak. One thing we can do, better than any creature in all Middle Earth, we stay true to each other with our hearts even bigger in our feet. And our massive cocks. We stay true to each other with our hearts even bigger than our feet. I'm not really sure what the hell Hobo Baggins was saying right there. And shout out to the G&G &G chat for coming out with that one. It was brilliant. But if that is any sign of what kind of dialogue we'll be getting regularly in this show, and believe me, they picked out some of the best, this is going to be much worse than we thought. With our hearts even bigger and I guess we can't avoid this. This is a better shot of not Gandalf and quite frankly, this is a bit awkward. I can survive this. You and I. Oh look, it's our forbidden romance. Guess who's coming to Eleven Z's, our elf of color and our activist from Harad. Oh God, this music makes me want to stick sharp objects in my ears. Oh, you bitch! You <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> no man left behind. Anyone. We're leaving <laughs> everyone behind. He's a cop. It'd be funny if the guy who fell was like, "I've got all the provisions, but fine." <laughs> 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 I've got the crampons for the mount. Oh, never mind. He, he just like Ooh. sets up a tent. And <laughs> he's just like, "Fine, <laughs> fuck off you." Why do you keep fighting? There is a tempest in me. There is a tempest in me? What the hell does that even mean? Maybe she ate too much Lambus bread. <laughs> By the power of white woman! You have fought long enough, Galadriel. Put up your sword. Gee, I wonder what kind of message they're trying to tell us with this scene. It's too subtle. I can't quite figure it out. Message! Battle of the Blackwater, anyone? And there's warrior Galadriel flipping her sword. I've plucked a few clips and put them together to tell you what this trailer is really trying to say. My brother gave his life hunting the enemy. His task is now mine. 
Commander! Wait! No! We keep moving! Why do you keep fighting? There is a tempest in me! You have fought long enough, Galadriel. Put up your sword. Without it, what am I to be? My god, that's as bad as... You have not seen what I have seen. I have seen my share. You have not seen what I have seen. And what we have here is passing the Bechdel test with flying colors, intersectional feminist Tolkien. A trailer with a lot of saccharine dialogue and not a peep of it came from Elendil or Isildur to major characters. And of course, there's no sign of Celeborn or Círdan to other major characters in the Second Age who won't even be appearing in season one and possibly not in the show at all. To answer the inevitable questions that we will get in the comments section, thank you very much. What is intersectional feminism? What is intersectional storytelling? I'll tell you exactly what it is. It's having Galadriel walking around in men's armor without her husband, Celeborn, who she is with through most of the Second Age. You see, according to intersectionalism, a true, strong, independent female cannot have any agency if she is guided or with a man, much less her husband. Another example of the intersectional nature of this Bechtel test passing story is Queen Regent Muriel. Out of the 25 rulers of Numenor, three were female and she wasn't one of them. She was supposed to be, but she wasn't, and they decided to roll with her. So she could then later team up with Galadriel to go into battle and slay some orc, which she also never did. It sounds insane because it is. These are not creative decisions being made. These are decisions based on ideology and identity politics. Intersectionalism, quite simply put, is a construct created by largely Marxist academics to disrupt traditionalism. She wants to subvert half a tradition. Down with the patriarchy. I think one of the Tolkien Society's papers from 2021 explains intersectionalism in storytelling the best. From the paper written by Dana Peterson DePros, Something Mighty Queer, Destabilizing Cis-Hetero Emetonormativity in the Works of Tolkien. And it really doesn't get more cis-hetero or traditional than Tolkien. But enough of that. We sit a week away from the premiere of Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Prime, and Amazon knows they have a giant, massive, unmitigated disaster on their hands. So they took a page from the Lucasfilm playbook and decided to attack the fans a little later than I expected. From Morphic Clark, who plays Galadriel on Instagram, tell me if this one doesn't sound familiar for the setup. Anyone sending hate to my black castmates, which I don't recommend anybody do, get off my page, get off the internet, and shut up. Was followed up almost immediately in a Time Magazine article talking to the showrunners. Then there are the real life trolls who take issue with the fact that Cordova, a black Puerto Rican man, is playing an elf of color. We'll get to that. And that young Galadriel, no, she's actually a full grown adult elf at this point, doesn't appear feminine because she wears armor. Well, she doesn't. We're just pointing out the truth. Payne has a Tolkien quote at the ready about trolls, creatures of dull and lumpish nature that had no more language than beasts. Weber is more direct. We're all up for criticism, she says. We're not up for racism. I think Cordova sums up the agenda quite nicely. Cordova always knew there was something missing from the Jackson films he adored. In previous interviews, he didn't seem to know much about Lord of the Rings, and all of a sudden he adored the Jackson films, yet there was something missing. I'm not sure how that's possible. Tom Bombadil was missing. Sure. Glorfindel was missing. Yeah. The scouring of the Shire was missing. He grew up in a small mountain town in Puerto Rico and harbored a childhood dream of playing an elf. Did he now? I didn't see myself represented. And when I said, I want to be an elf, people said, elves don't look like you. Well, they don't look like me either. I'm not six foot four, angelic, and have pointy ears. When I heard about the character on the show, it felt like a mission. Well, thank you for your honesty. That's exactly how it feels to us in the fandom as well. Speaking of Ismael Cordova, will we get a proper follow-up to Sofia Namvet's Dwarf of color. There will no longer be longer be a time where you can say there are no elves of color. No, oh, we got it. So we erased that one. You know, this conversation will never be there. Oh, you're no. I'm an elf. 
We're just one away, folks. All we need is a hobbit of color, and I am positive Lenny Henry will say it at some point in the next couple of weeks. I'll even accept our Harfoot of color. If we get that, we get the identity politics trifecta. I don't exactly hate to break this to Ismael Cordova. He is not the first elf of color, not by a long shot. Here's the bottom line. The opportunist, the poser, the activist invaded and poisoned our world. And we had no choice in the matter, but we are an open and sharing lot in fandom. We're also a quarrelsome lot. It's the way it's always been. But once you go through your trials and tribulations, you are respected. We love to share what we love. That's the foundation of fandom that companies like Disney and their subsidiaries, Marvel and Lucasfilm, Warner Brothers, Netflix and Amazon, along with their willing and able partners in the access media, have completely pulverized. No one talked about dwarves or elves of color back in the day, even when they did exist, because nobody cared. We are individual, passionate fans, that made these franchises what they are. It's what these corporations pay for. And now they are splitting us apart with their corporate woke bullshit. And yes, I know the shills came out right on cue with their vague and very predictable overpraise, including the Tolkien professor and Steve Weintraub. Imagine being that dude. You've been doing it for years and you still need to rush out first so somebody will listen to your very bland opinion. Then imagine being the critical drinker or mauler who can make a video on whatever they want, whenever they want, and people flock to them. Wouldn't you rather be good than first? Maybe this is the first time someone's seeing my video, so please forgive me for repeating this, but I've been making videos for three years warning this would happen to Lord of the Rings and it has, yet I was still willing to give the show a chance until I actually found out what happens in it. And I have no sympathy for the repurposing mental midget brainless simpletons who brought this into our fandom. Take your basic bitch ass and toss it into the fiery chasm from which it came. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. My next Rings of Power video will be a review of the first two episodes next week. See you next time. Nerderotic.com Cast it into the fire! Destroy it! White women! Wah, 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 wah. Dear God, please shut the